Amen. What a great song. Well done. Thank you, Brother Mitchell. Open your Bibles again, if you will, to Acts chapter 4. And verse 31 is my text verse, and I'm going to preach a very simple message tonight entitled, Why I Love the Work of the Church. Why I Love the Work of the Church. Verse number 31, And when they had prayed, the place was shaken, where they were assembled together. What a powerful statement. And they didn't just pray for formality. And they weren't praying for ritual sake. They were not just repeating words. They were connected to the God of heaven. And their prayer made a difference. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God with boldness. Heavenly Father, bless the preaching, I pray. I pray your power and be upon every word. In Jesus' name, amen. Acts chapter 4 is a very busy chapter in the book of Acts. It contains in one chapter many wonderful and exciting elements of the life and work of the local church. There are several things that bring fellowship to the people of the church in this chapter. There's a fellowship of the Savior as they talk about and they tell about the resurrection of the living Savior. Aren't you glad we serve a risen and a living Lord? Throughout history, since the resurrection of Christ, we've been celebrating, as we will next Sunday morning. If you think about this time, 2,000 years ago, they praised him the week before, and then they cried, crucified him, and they did. They crucified the Savior, and um, it was a part of God's plan. They didn't take his life. He laid it down, and he gave his life a ransom that we might go free. And I'm glad that after that third day, it wasn't on Friday, it was on Sunday, that he arose from the grave, the fellowship of the Savior. This cha- in this chapter, we also find the fellowship of soul winning. The Bible says that there were many that believed as a result of their preaching. There was also the fellowship of suffering, fellowship of difficulty. They suffered for the cause of Christ. May a bit of embarrassment or a bit of hurting our pride not keep us from serving Christ this week. And may we be willing to give a gospel track. May we not let the fear of someone rejecting a gospel track, that we would take it personal, and that we would not obey Christ in giving the gospel because we fear our pride would be hurt. These folks, they shared the fellowship of suffering. They also shared the fellowship of salvation. Many believed. Many came to know Christ as Savior. They also enjoyed the fellowship of supplication. They prayed together, and as a result of their prayer, the Bible says the place was shaken. I love church. I've been blessed to be a part of a happy, growing, soul-winning church all of my life. Went to church just as a little boy, saved just before I was six years old, and churches that love the Lord and won people to Christ. Happy places, wonderful places. We're mighty blessed to be in church tonight. There were many good churches in Ukraine. They're gone today and the people are scattered. I'm thankful tonight for the fellowship of church. I'll just tell you, I don't like dead church. I don't like worldly church. I don't like carnal church. I don't like complacent church. I don't like stale church any more than I like stale bread. I like church the way it was in the Word of God. I have to tell you that I love church right here at Clay's Mill Baptist Church. I hunger and desire for this place to be a place that helps us enjoy life and serving God. We haven't been sentenced to Christianity. We've been set free by Christ. I desire for our church to be a place for the family to grow and 
fun activities of life, realizing there is joy in serving Jesus. I desire for our church to be a place that cares about the souls of men, both here and around the world. I want to give you from this passage of Scripture tonight five reasons why I love the work of the church. First of all, church is a place of purpose. We're not here just to spin our wheels and remark something off of our list of responsibilities. Church is filled with a purpose. It gives us a reason to live. As I said this morning, if we know the why of anything, we can bear the how. I find great meaning in being in church and being reminded of my purpose of life that God created me and made me for Him and God wants to fellowship with me and God wants me to spend time with Him. I find purpose in church. I find purpose in the Word of God. It's not just something that we do, but it is our purpose in life. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Church is not something we add to life. Church is life and we build our lives around it. We build our homes, our family, our children. We build our uh, enjoyment of life, our, our work, our responsibility. We build it around church and we find a purpose in church. Even in suffering. Even in the suffering for the cause of Christ, you'll find that these churches, as you read through the book of Acts, were filled with joy. Suffering did not take away their joy, for they saw meaning even in the suffering as folks saw their willingness to pay a price against the, uh, the rulers and leaders of the world that would try to stop them. And in this chapter, many were thrown in jail and they were threatened, but they came together and they prayed and uh, they even found found meaning in their suffering. You know, we don't mind suffering if there is a benefit. You don't have surgery for enjoyment. You don't have surgery so you can take off of work a week or two. You have surgery and even though it causes pain, we can bear that because we know it fixes a problem. It helps us to live. And I want to say tonight, I love church because of the purpose that it gives. I love the purpose of helping people know Christ is Savior. You know, it's, I don't know about you, I enjoy helping folks with anything. I enjoy just, just, I like just help the folks. Doesn't matter what it is. I've helped folks change uh, uh, flat tires and got to witness to them. I've, I enjoy helping people. But when I think about giving someone the gospel and not just showing them how to get to town, not just showing them how to find a restaurant or a place where they're lost, but showing them they can have eternal life in Christ and heaven is their home and not just change a little bit, but change all eternity. Hey, that's a purpose in life. That's why I love church. I love the purpose of getting the gospel out. I love the bus ministry as it fulfills our purpose. I love personal soul winning as it fulfills our purpose. I love Sunday school and the teaching of the word of God as it fulfills our purpose. I love that purpose of helping people to know Christ and the importance of being separated from the world. A lot of folks get hung up on that. Being separated from the world doesn't mean anything except that I love the Lord enough to say I'd rather have Jesus Jesus than anything this whole world uh, can afford. The Bible says in John 15 and verse number 19, if you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you're not of the world, but I've chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. He told him in the chapter, he said, the world hates me as well. Hey, but we are light and we are salt and let's be what God's called us to be. First John chapter two, verse number 15, he tells us, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, and if you know the context of that book, you know that John, uh, the, uh, uh, John the writer uh, is speaking to a third generation that has drifted a bit uh, from the commitment and cause of Christ. And he tells them, uh, love not the world uh, as a grandfather would say to his grandchildren and great-grandchildren, neither the things that are in the world. Uh, hey, he said, the world passeth away and all that's in it. Ah, but when you do the will of the Father, there's great joy joy and there's purpose in living. It's hard for me to believe that I became a pastor, a full-time pastor. I was ordained 36 years ago this week. April 16, 1986. It seemed like yesterday that I was just a 
kid preacher. I think about it often, 36 years behind me. I don't look forward to a retirement. I dread the day that I'm not able to stand and preach. I dread the day that I wouldn't be able to do what I love so much doing now. I love to pray for you. And I believe with all of my heart, I believe God hears prayers. I love to pray for you. I love to pray for your families. I love to pray as I read your prayer request and I, and I see and, and, and I imagine the burden that you carry and, 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 and the prayer request that you have. Sometimes it's family or sometimes it's marriage or sometimes it's children or sometimes it's a decision. Oh, I dread the day that I can't do that. I remember Dr. Howells used to make a statement he used to say, I, I, don't, I don't worry about you getting another preacher for somebody that can preach. He said, other fellows can preach, but he said, they just can't love you like I love you. You know, when you serve people a long time, you pray for them. Pray for them through the difficulties, through the births of children, through the funerals. I think this past week was the first week I've had in like seven or eight weeks that I didn't have a funeral. Funerals are not, they're not easy. It's difficult to say goodbye even though for, it's just for a little while. I just want to say tonight I love church because church gives us purpose. Second of all, I love the work of church because it is a place of prayer. Prayer is not a ritual as I said. Prayer is not something that we just move a bead over and move a bead over and move a bead over and say, well, I've fulfilled my responsibility and hopefully one day I will have prayed enough and been good enough that I can make it to heaven. Oh, no, I talk to my heavenly father like I talk to my mom and dad. I text my mom Saturday morning. I said, I made it home this morning about 10 o'clock. I appreciate you praying for me this week. I love you. She texts me back. She said, I'm so glad you're home and glad you had a safe week of travel. And I love you. That's how I talk to God. I'm not moving a bead. Hey, we're moving heaven. The Bible said they prayed. The fire fell. The power fell. Prayer's a benefit. Prayer's a blessing. Prayer is an advantage. I used to envy the world as the psalmist did as he talks about in Psalm 73. I used to envy the world because I thought they had an advantage. But the more I've studied the Bible and longer I've been a Christian, I feel sorry for the world because all they know is people. I know the one that holds the heart of the king in his hand. I know the one that directs the course of the river and the seas and the ocean. I know the one that caused a beautiful sun to rise over here early this morning and will cause it to set this evening. I know the one that owns a cattle on a thousand hills. Hey, I love the joy and the privilege and the advantage of prayer. I love prayer time and family devotions. As we together as a family yield our life to Christ and praise Him for who He is and follow the instruction of what we've read in the Scripture. I remember growing up as a boy and as a teenager until I went to Bible college, family devotions with my dad as he would read the Bible and read a, a story, of some kind of a story of application of the Scripture and then pray. I remember the prayers that he would pray. I love praying. I love the personal time here early on a Sunday morning and on a Sunday afternoon and on a Saturday. I love the times of prayer. I told God this week, I've enjoyed being up here 35,000 feet in there. I didn't plan to stay this long, but I've enjoyed being up here close to heaven. I enjoy seeing the clouds and the skies and wondering what it's like in the third heaven and knowing that there's a place in, uh, that's uh, not just called heaven, but it's a place called home. It's a place of mansions. It's a place where the uh, 
streets are made of gold and the walls are of jasper. And all, oh, listen to me, the gates made of pearl. It's a wonderful place. I love spending time with God in prayer. You know, everything that we have today is a result of God answering prayers. We're in a place tonight that God hadn't just answered little prayers. God's given miracle after miracle. I don't want to ever come to the place that I don't look at a miracle and I'm not wowed and over uh, and overwhelmed and amazed. I don't want to take for granted the good hand of God. I don't want to take for granted the answers to God's uh, to prayers from God. Every building and property our church has is a result of prayer. It's not the result of wealth. It's not the result of power. It's a result of prayer. Do you know we're building our sixth building in 31 years? Sixth building. We started 3,000 Clays Mill Road. That first uh, small auditorium. Then we built the gymnasium and we were there uh, for a little while until 1998 from 95 to 98. And then we built uh, the church auditorium and remod remodeled it and took out every wall we could and added a balcony. Then we were over in a rented building uh, beside the college at uh, 3400 Versailles Road. This is our fifth building and it's a joy to see building number six going up. It's a joy to walk around the plot out there, building number seven. How long are you going? I'm just going to keep building and filling them up until Jesus comes. That's what we're going to do because God is a God that answers prayers. Every church we've planted has been a result of prayer. Many across the state, some of them more than 20 years old, uh, Brother Jesus. James Young will start another church next week in Jasper, Indiana. Uh, many we've helped to provide a pastor for. I'm praying for finances not only to complete this building, I'm praying for finances to finish a building in Irapuato, Mexico, where this week they saw nearly a thousand people come to know Christ as Savior. When I asked Brother Arache how his day went, I believe I got 65 pictures in one message, 23 in another, I don't know how many all together, every one of a different baptism of folks getting saved. I had a little part to do with that because God answered prayer and gave us a church and gave us a camp. I love church because of the power of prayer. I love church number three because of preaching. I love preaching. I love the preaching of the word of God. I got to hear this week in Iowa, I got to hear Brother Davis preach on Monday night. He told one of the funniest stories I ever heard. He'll have to tell you. I'm not going to tell you tonight. But, but, but one of the funniest stories, now you're not going to hear anything I'm going to say because you're wondering what story. And uh, uh, anyway, I don't have time to tell it. And then I heard Brother Dallas on Tuesday night. And uh, Wednesday night I was trying to hear Brother Fisher. And my hearing aids died. I almost died in the Atlanta airport. I thought I was going to. And anyway, anyway, I survived. I'm home. I made it. And, uh, but I love preaching. I love preaching of the Word of God. Old Stephen was a powerful preacher in that book right there, wasn't he? You say, what a shame it was that Stephen died and it ended the preaching. Ah, oh, but there was a young man. They laid his clothes at the feet of the young man named Saul. And no doubt God used that to rattle that man's heart and soul and mind. And a short time after that, he became a preacher of the gospel. Oh, John the Baptist was a preacher. I'd love to hear that sermon he preached entitled, Generation of Vipers. I bet that was a good one. They didn't have Nehi Maya Sunday. They had Wild Locust and Honey Sunday. I'd rather have Nehi Maya Sunday. Things that crawl and creep or looks like they did just a few minutes ago, you can keep those. I don't like those. Wouldn't you love to heard the sermon that Jesus preached? Peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Ah, but the peace that had to come from the preaching of the Lord Jesus. I was given some pictures a couple of weeks ago from Marshila Stephan of when Lester Olaf preached at the old property on 3000 Clays Mill Road. Was any of you folks under the tent? I wasn't there. Anybody under the tent? You was there? And a few folks was there under the tent. I believe it was 1980 when Lester Roloff preached under the tent. I forget, I couldn't think of the name of the reporter, uh, but there's a reporter uh, 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 in the picture uh, that's uh, doing uh, an interview of Lester Roloff. I love the preaching of Lester Roloff. It was unlike any other preaching I'd ever heard. I loved it. 
I love to hear Dr. Arnold preach. Do you remember 101 years old? Isaiah chapter 6. Here am I, Lord. Send me. He gave him everything he had right to the last day. Dr. Shelton Smith, I love to hear him open the Bible and preach the Psalms. Twenty times Dr. Hiles preached. Remember the sermon 3A? He preached sermon 3A. Remember who he was sitting by? Crab. Remember that? Lee Robertson preached. I remember as he got up in years, he'd point his finger at you. It was always crooked. <laughs> Tom Malone. Joe Boyd. This is my favorite place in all the world to preach. I preach all over America. I have invitations to preach across the world. There's no place I'd rather preach than right here in this place. God is pleased by the simplicity or the foolishness of preaching. I love the work of the local church because of preaching. Preaching that condemns sin. Preaching that converts the sinner. Preaching that cleanses the saint. Preaching that comforts the soul. Preaching that challenges the servant. Preaching of the Word of God. I love it. I love the preaching of the Word of God. I love the work of God because it's a place of power. I like that. Acts 4.31 And when they prayed, the place was shaken. Take your Bibles go to Acts chapter 8. I'm sorry, Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1 and verse number 8. I love this place because church is a place of power. Our power is not motivation. Our power is not our excitement. Our power is not our emotion. Our power is not an emotional or mental stir. Our power is not just the stirring of emotion from a song. I enjoy all of that. Ah, but dear friend, the power of the church is the God of heaven and the great Holy Spirit of God. He said in Acts chapter 1 and verse number 8, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and all Judea, and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. I love church because of the power, power that changes a life. I see it work and working in our church. It's not us. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. I know what it is. It's the power that comes from prayer. The power that comes from God. The power that comes from walking with God. I know what I am. I know what we are. We are vessels at best of the Lord. But a vessel is useless when it's empty. Oh, but how wonderful it is when it's filled with the power and power of God. And it can be used. How wonderful to teach a Sunday school class and see the power of the Word of God change a life. To see the power of the Word of God set the captive free. I was talking to visitors this morning and a lady said to me, she said, I've been watching on television and uh, she said, I've been too tired to come to church. But you know what you said last night? I'd forgot what I said last night. She said, I said, I know you're tired, but get out of that bed on Sunday morning. Don't be lazy, get to church. And she said, I didn't want to be lazy, so I came to church today. Another lady, I met her, I said, have you been here before? She said, I haven't. I listened to you on radio. She said, on Thursday and on Saturday, somebody left one of these papers on my door. And she said, I thought that was a sign from God. I needed to be in church. And she came to church this morning and she enjoyed it. We're not trying to impress somebody with our singing, though I'm impressed with the singing and I love it. That's not our goal. We're not trying to perform with the choir, though I think we've got a tremendous choir and I love to hear them sing. Oh, I'm thankful for this place because of the power of the almighty God of heaven. That's what changes our life. That's what gives us the strength to stand. That's what gives us, it gives us the ability to fight the devil and fight sin and stand for what is right. The verse that said in 2 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse number 7 For God hath not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Paul said in Philippians 4 13 I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Luke chapter 10 verse number 19 Behold I give unto you 
power, he said in that verse, to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. And he's not telling us to handle snakes and scorpions. He's telling us as using an illustration that my power is greater and stronger than anything. You do my will, I'll be the power of success. First Corinthians 4 and verse number 20, for the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. First Corinthians 6 and verse number 14, and God hath both raised up the Lord and will also raise up us by his own power. Ephesians 6 and verse number 10, finally my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We don't go out of here tomorrow like a soapbox car trying to pedal our way through the difficulties of life. We go out of here tomorrow with the power of the Holy Spirit within us. We can overcome. We are victors in Christ. We have the power of God in our lives. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse number 9, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power power of Christ may rest upon me. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse number 20, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Colossians chapter 1 and verse number 11, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness and that's just a sample. You don't have to go out in your own power. You don't have to go out in your own will. It's not the power of positive thinking. It's the power of a powerful God that lives within us. I love the work of church because of the power of God. Last of all, I love the work of the church because of the praise of God. Turn your Bibles to Acts chapter 2. I love every song tonight. I love every song this morning as we praise Him. I do my best to think of the words and what they mean to me. We're not singing a tune, we're singing the truth. Acts chapter 2, verse 47. Praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Psalm 107, that's an easy one to find. Right in the middle of your Bible, Psalm 107. I love this place because it's a place we come together and we praise God. Oh, I love to praise him as I travel down the highway. I love to praise him as I walk in the field behind the building. I love to praise him as I walk through this building and around the buildings. I love it. Ah, but I love it when we get together and we begin to sing. I sing the mighty power of God and every voice lifted in praise to our almighty God. Psalm 107, verse number eight. All oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. I was talking to a young lady recently and she had faced some difficulties in life and sometimes we all get to thinking about the burdens we bear and the difficulties that we face and that's true in every life. Oh, but dear friend, I also have a few things I don't deserve. I'm glad I'm saved tonight. I'm thankful for his grace that's giving me what I don't deserve. I'm thankful for his mercy not giving me what I do deserve. I'm thankful that heaven is more than a place. Heaven is my home. I have a title deed to that place in heaven. And, and, and I don't have to pay for it. It's already paid for. And I don't have to rent it back from the government to live in it either. It's already paid and there are no taxes that ought to make you shout right there. No taxes that we have to pay. Hallelujah. I have a place in heaven. I enjoy the blessings of life and answer to prayers. I, I enjoy seeing so many of our children serving the Lord and church plants are being blessed and mission churches are being blessed. We're going to hear from one of our missionaries been in China for 10 years this summer. We're going to hear from a couple. They've been in China 10 years. God's blessed them. I love the work of the church because it's a place to praise God. Stand with me, if you will. I'm going to stop preaching. It's seven minutes after seven. 
I want you to do something for me. Bow your heads, close your eyes. I want you to think in your mind. I want you to tell God, God, I praise you for my salvation. I want you to think back to that day when you prayed and asked Christ to save you. You remember the fear that gripped your heart and soul? You were to die in your sins, you'd die and go to a devil's hell. You remember the struggle you had of being saved? Remember when you called on him in the peace and the joy that came? Lord, thank you for your salvation. Thank you for a home in heaven. Thank you for the good Bible, always true. Heavenly Father, with heads bowed, we praise you for who you are. We thank you for the privilege to serve you. Lord, in the midst of circumstances, turmoil and war and advancement of sin and wickedness, we still stand in the old church tonight, the church that you promised perpetuity. We lift our voice in praise and a thank you to say thank you for your goodness to us. Help us this week to win somebody else to you. Help us this week to be light and salt as we go about our work and our business and all that we have to care for in this week. Bless our invitation in Jesus' name. Amen. As he sings on the invitation song, if you here tonight, you don't know Christ as your Savior. You ought to trust Christ as your Savior tonight. You ought to trust Christ as your Savior tonight. Just step out of this seat. Why don't you make that decision now? Tell one of these men or ladies, they're waiting here in the front. They'll take the Bible and show you how you can know heaven is your home. You're here tonight as a child of God. You're overwhelmed by the burdens, circumstances of life. Why don't you step away from those for just a few minutes and say, Lord, thank you for your goodness to me. Go back and remember your salvation, your surrender. Look at the place where you live. Look at the family God's given to you. Look at the blessings of your life. We have much to praise him about tonight. I love the work of church. I love it because it is a place of preaching, a place of power, a place of prayer, a place of praise. How blessed we are. How blessed we are. My heart hurts for this whole world. I was talking to a man this week that had recently surrendered his life to Christ. He said, you know, I worked to be really successful in business, and I was. He said, I don't know how many millions of dollars I'd made and I was worth. But he said, everything I had... When I experienced it, it was empty. It wasn't the satisfaction I thought it was. He said, it's, it's odd to me. He said, I still work the same job and I'm still blessed. But now that I've surrendered my life to Christ, and I'm in church every Sunday and Wednesday, and he was at a special meeting during the week, he said, you know, this satisfies me more than anything I do. Going home and saying it's been good to be in church today. Amen. It was good to have my little place of service and just show up and be there and do my part in helping and serving other people. This makes life worth living. Everything else in life, yes, it's a part of our life. Jesus said, I know you have need of those things. I know you do. I know you need those things. But he said, if you put me first, you can enjoy all those things. But this is what will give you purpose in life. Heavenly Father.